Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. After being taken away from her family for her own safety, a special little dog escapes from her shelter and decides to start a long journey back home. Today we will recap the story of the 2019 movie, A Dog's Way Home. In the city of Denver, Colorado, the little dog Bella and her siblings were born in a place surrounded by cats. That was her first family. Her mother is an extremely docile pit bull who raised her puppies along with the cats that lived there. They were a happy family, until the place was invaded. One day, two men show up to capture the animals living there. All of Bella's siblings are taken away and the mother cat manages to escape with only one kitten. Then the dog's mother is captured, and the mother cat comes back to save Bella. In the weeks that follow, the feline takes care of her until, one fine day, Lucas and Olivia show up. Bella didn't trust humans, after all, they were the ones who captured her family, but Lucas was different. He went every day to feed those animals and the cats liked him. Then, that afternoon, Bella decides to come out of hiding and go after him. Immediately, they fall in love with each other and the boy decides to adopt her. Since the place is private property, Gunter orders the couple to leave. After saying goodbye to Olivia, Lucas rushes home and introduces the new member of the family to his mother. The problem is that the lease prohibits them from adopting pets, so they will have to keep Bella a secret. After that day, she and the boy become best friends. Bella loves Lucas's blanket, because it smells like him. To get attention, the dog often steals his shoes, because she knows that her human will soon come after her. But, her favorite play is when Lucas gives her a tiny slice of cheese, which he takes from his sandwich. Also, the best part is that the young man continues to feed the kittens every day and takes Bella to visit his family. Years have passed and their companionship has only grown. When Lucas goes to work at the veterans hospital, his mother, Terry, takes Bella for a walk. The woman is a retired former war veteran and always has to stop Bella from attacking the squirrels that appear in the neighborhood. One afternoon when they return home, Gunter appears and makes a threat. He tells them that he owns the abandoned houses across the street and orders the woman to ask her son to stop calling the authorities about the cats living there. Gunter even claims to have gotten rid of those animals already, but Terry knows he is lying, because there are still cats living inside. Weeks later, the winter season arrives and Bella is excited to see the snow. Lucas takes her to play in the park and the dog has fun with him and the children. Days later, when he comes home from work, Lucas finds, taped to the door, a note from the owner in which he says he will show up the next day to fix the sink. The problem is that the boy needs to go to work and Terry has therapy, so there is no one who can stay with Bella so the owner doesn't see her. Therefore, the young man decides to take her with him to the hospital, even though this risks getting him fired. With the help of his mother, he enters with the dog through the back door and manages to go unnoticed by the other employees. Lucas then takes her to the pantry and asks Bella to be quiet, because he will be back to see her soon. Minutes later, while talking to the head doctor, the boy hears Bella's barking and runs to her. Olivia also hears the noise and finds the two of them in the pantry. Not knowing what to do, Lucas asks Olivia if she knows someone who can take care of Bella until lunchtime. Just then, Teo shows up and offers to keep her. The man takes the dog to the veterans meeting, which Terry attends. Immediately, Bella makes friends with all the members and the woman says that the next day she will take the dog to therapy again. Now Bella has many new friends. Every day, she keeps Terry company in the hospital and no longer has to stay home alone. When Dr. Gan shows up, she hides inside the sofa and stays put until he leaves. Months later, Lucas and Olivia begin dating and are walking with Bella when they spot the beginning of construction on the houses across the street where the kittens live. While Olivia calls the rescue, Lucas tries to stop them from continuing to tear the place down. Just then, Gunter shows up in a rage, claiming that he has no cats on his property. Then the cats run off, including Mother Cat. To get revenge, that night, the man sends Chuck to Lucas' house. The police officer says pit bulls are banned in the city of Denver, but since the dog is on private property, animal control cannot act. However, Chuck states that if he sees that animal walking on the streets, he will immediately take her. After this threat, Lucas begins to train Bella to come home alone. Every time he tells the dog to go home, she must immediately run back home. This way, they don't have to worry if Chuck finds them on the street. That afternoon, Bella spots a squirrel in the window and runs after it. Terry and Lucas search for several hours, until the boy finally finds her. Soon after, Chuck shows up and informs them that he will take the animal. So Lucas puts his plan into action and orders Bella to go home. However, the dog believes that the boy is in danger and refuses to leave him. Chuck takes two policewomen to support him in case Lucas wants to resist, so he is unable to prevent his dog from being taken away. He takes Bella on his lap and puts her in a cage with the promise that he will come back for her soon. The little dog is then taken to the pound and left there for hours waiting for her best friend to come and get her. 
However, the rescue only takes place the next day. First thing in the morning, Lucas pays the fine and goes to pick up his companion. The kennel employee reports that the dog has been classified as a pit bull and if she is caught again she will have to be put down. This is what the law mandates, so Lucas plans to move to Golden, a city near Denver that does not prohibit the adoption of pit bulls. Until the boy finds a new home to move into, Olivia says he can leave Bella with her aunt and uncle who live in Farmington, New Mexico, 400 miles away. Since he has no other option, Lucas decides to go along with the idea, otherwise Bella's life will be at risk. In the car, the boy says goodbye to his friend and assures her that very soon they will meet again. A few hours later, the couple arrives home and Bella has to get used to her temporary home. A few days later, Jose receives a call, in which Lucas informs him that he has managed to find a home and will pick up the dog the next day. The next morning, Jose mows the lawn to welcome Olivia and Lucas. However, Bella was already impatient and afraid that she would never be able to return home. So she looks for an opportunity to escape and return to her family. The dog uses the slide as a ramp to jump over the fence and leave. By this time Lucas was almost at Farmington to pick her up and they both miss each other. Now, Bella will have a long journey to complete her mission to return home. That first night, the dog was exhausted and very scared, as it was her first time sleeping in the forest. She hears various sounds and smells various strange smells. The next morning Bella is very hungry and decides to go after a rabbit for food, but that animal is even faster than the squirrels she used to hunt. Since she couldn't get anything to eat, she decides to go to the city, believing that the people will feed her. It is at this point that she meets a new gang that takes her in and helps her get food. They visit the best cafeterias in town, and one tooth teaches her how to get food from trash cans. In the evening, the dogs return to their homes, and Max invites Bella to become part of his human family. However, the dog decides to continue her journey and continue her mission to return home. Now she knows that to hunt, it is necessary to go to places that have people. Meanwhile, Lucas was scattering posters everywhere in search of his mate. Bella is walking in the forest when she hears a loud noise. She goes there to find out what has happened and finds a cougar shot. Bella tries to wake him up, but the hunters arrive soon after and she has to hide. At that moment, she spots the cougar cub whose mother was killed. Bella then decides to take care of the feline, just as her mother cat took care of her. The dog feeds her and they both sleep together for warmth every night. As they need to feed, Bella goes out to hunt. The dog looks for places populated by humans to steal food and takes advantage of every opportunity that comes along. In time, Big Kitten grows up and Bella guides her through the forest on her way to her home. At night, they keep each other warm, for they had already become a family. One day, while walking through the forest, Bella smells a dog-like smell, but it wasn't quite that. Soon, a pack of wolves approaches and begins chasing them. As a mother, Bella is concerned to protect her feline daughter, and as Big Kitten climbs a tree trunk, the dog is surrounded by the wolf. To her luck, before she is devoured, three men approach and drive the animals away. Since Big Kitten is afraid of humans, she decides to run away, but Bella decides to follow them to try to get food. One of those guys removes the dog's collar to try to contact her guardian. Meanwhile, his partner prepares dinner. The man calls Lucas, but the call ends up going to voicemail. Upon hearing the voice recording left by the boy, Bella gets excited and ends up knocking down the phone. At that moment, the third guy notices that something is moving in the bushes and goes look what it is. Then he spots Big Kitten and everyone runs away. Now, without her collar, Bella takes the meat package and leaves. Months later, the dog faces her first winter without Lucas. Big Kitten spots some fish moving under the frozen lake and tries to catch them. Then Bella joins her and they both start playing in the snow. Suddenly, she hears some barking and runs towards them excitedly, because it has been a long time since she has played with another dog. Soon they meet and Dutch takes off running towards the dog. Just then, an avalanche begins and Kirch is buried in the snow. Bella runs away, but after the incident she hears the dog barking in despair. She runs to help him dig through the ice to dig up his human, at that time Gavin and Taylor show up. After saving Kirch they call for help and the man is taken away still unconscious. The couple believes that the two dogs belong to the victim and decide to keep them. From afar, Bella spots Big Kitten and tries to go to her, but those humans insist on taking her away. When she arrives at the cottage, the dog is still trying to get out. She can smell her feline daughter and knows that Big Kitten is waiting outside. At the end of the vacation, the couple returns home and takes the dogs with them. After trying out several names, Gavin discovers that the dog's name is Bella and gives her a name tag. Dutch likes his new home very much and feels really happy there. Bella is also happy with this family. They feed her very well and provide a warm and comfortable place for them to sleep. Within days, the dogs were already part of the family, but after arriving home from work, Taylor receives a phone call. 
Kurt's sister contacts her to say that the man is out of the hospital and Taylor arranges a day to take the dogs back. When they arrive at the cabin Dutch comes running out as he is happy to see his guardian, but the man orders the dog off him and says he doesn't want him back. At that point, the couple discovers that that man was not Bella's guardian and Kirch states that he will not be keeping any of those dogs. Then Gavin picks up the two dogs and takes them back to the car. From that moment on, they officially become part of the family. They return to the cottage and let the animals out for a walk, but Bella takes this opportunity to leave, as she was still determined to find Lucas. Dutch wanted her to stay, but Bella had a bigger purpose. Now the dog was in a family that truly deserved it, but Bella still needed to find her own. After they say goodbye, Bella goes into the forest. When evening comes, she is hungry again and is attracted by the strong smell of chicken. The dog enters the store and tries to steal one of the food packages, but the clerk tries to stop her. As she runs through the market, she causes a major disaster while being chased, but manages to get the chicken. After eating, Axel approaches her and offers his water. That guy is a homeless man who decides to take the dog along with him to increase the collection of donations. From that day on, Bella always lived on his leash. Although he always fed the dog and warmed her on cold days, the man never played with her. Bella wanted to have fun with other dogs, but she could not take a single step without being by Axel's side. At the end of winter, they went camping in the forest, and Bella was trying at all costs to get out of her leash. When he sees the rope bitten, the man, who was already ill, fastens the dog with a chain, because he did not want to be left by the only being that kept him company. That night, the homeless man dies in his sleep and Bella remains trapped in the chain. She feels hungry and manages to feed herself from the food left in the camp. At the end of the day, the dog is very thirsty, but she cannot reach the river. Days passed and she was still trapped, until two young men showed up riding their bicycles and spotted the dog. They realize that there is a dead man next to her and release her. Immediately, Bella goes to drink water and then continues her journey. It has been two years since she separated from Lucas, but the dog has not forgotten him for a minute. One night, while walking through the forest, a pack finds her and the wolves start chasing her. This time she manages to lose them, but the next day they find her again. Bella tries to escape, but ends up being surrounded. The wolves attack her and are about to eliminate her, but to her surprise, Big Kitten appears and is now bigger than ever. She attacks the wolves and makes them retreat. Bella feels very happy to see her feline daughter and Big Kitten helps her clean her wounds. Together, they travel on and Bella can't wait to take her home so they can both sleep together with Lucas. When she wakes up, the dog comes across several bison and runs scared to meet up with Big Kitten. As she looks at the horizon, she realizes that she is close to home and about to meet her friend, Lucas. From then on, Big Kitten could no longer follow her, and they say goodbye. In that instant, Bella knows that this will be the last time she will see her feline daughter, and both go their separate ways. When she arrives in town, the dog has to face a new challenge, surviving the traffic. The vehicles pass quickly from one side to the other and Bella tries to cross the avenue without being run over. In the meantime, she ends up causing accidents and some drivers stop to try to help her. However, Bella runs away from them all, because she is focused on completing her mission. As she crosses to the other side of the street, the inevitable happens and the dog is run over. She is thrown and her paw is injured, but she still gets up and continues on her way. The policewoman tries to rescue her, but Bella goes into the woods and walks back to her old neighborhood. When she finally arrives home, she uses all the rest of her strength to bark and call for her family. However, another woman is the one who opens the door and Bella rushes into the house. Once there, she realizes that the whole smell is different. The woman gets scared and calls animal control. Lucas and Terry were not there, so Bella decides to rest before going out to look for them. At that moment, she spots the mother cat, who also has a home now. Minutes later, Chuck shows up and the dog has to run away again. Now there was only one place left where Bella could look for Lucas. The dog walks to the hospital and, upon entering there, finds several dogs. It seems that in the last two and a half years they have decided to allow dogs in that place. Olivia spots the little dog walking through the halls and goes after her. Bella follows Lucas' scent trail and arrives at the therapy room, where she finds Teo and the others. As the veterans greet her, the dog spots Lucas and runs toward him. They embrace, and the boy cries with emotion when he finds out that his friend is alive. Olivia and Terry show up shortly afterwards and everyone celebrates together. Now Bella is finally home. As Lucas leaves the hospital to take her to the vet, Chuck shows up to take her. Along with him are other city officials, including the police captain. The man orders them to let the animal be taken away, but the veterans claim that in order to take Bella, the cops will have to go through them. In that instant, Lucas remembers that that hospital does not belong to the city of Denver, but to the federal government. Therefore, Chuck couldn't take it. 
Captain Micah then orders the officers to leave and states that of all the officers, Chuck gets the most complaints. Therefore, the captain orders him to return the police car and takes the opportunity to take him off the field. After leaving the veterinary hospital, Lucas takes Bella to his new home in the nearby town of Golden. The boy lives there with Olivia, who returns Bella's favorite blanket. Afterwards, Lucas gives her a tiny bite of cheese and the dog feels happier than ever. After so long, she was able to find her home and was finally able to sleep next to Lucas again. Bella was where she needed to be, and so was Big Kitten. Before long, the feline built her own family and would occasionally spend the night watching the city where her mommy dog lived. So, what did you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.